right, we're here with the artist and painter Lisa Fazio. I'm Carla Lavelle, and it is World Art Day. And we are very fortunate to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> so, uh, what inspires you to paint, and how did you get started? Well, as a little girl, um, mm -hmm. I just would walk around and I would color in my coloring book, but I often did it on the back page where it was blank. Mm -hmm. So my mom knew I really, really loved painting and drawing, so she started me out and put it up on the wall, on the refrigerator like everybody else. And then I went to school and uh, started to start my journey. And it's been a, a wonderful journey from what I've gathered and what I've seen. And you have different techniques that you utilize, which I'm very excited because you're gonna share some of that with our viewers today. I am. I am. Okay, well, I don't want to stop the artistic process, so I'm going to let you get started, and I'm going to be right here watching you, and then you're going to guide us through it, right? Okay, I am. I See, am. You hear that, guys? She's going to walk us through painting. This is your chance to get and learn skills. <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes. My stick figures are about to, like, increase dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's terrific. I want right. to inspire everyone. Yes. <laughs> Again, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be entertaining you with a watercolor demonstration, show you a little bit about uh, my background and other mediums of art and then try to get you excited about creating art for yourself. Okay, uh, my name is Lisa Fazio, artist. If you want to look me up um, on the web, you can send me any questions. Um, that would be great. I'd love to hear some feedback. Uh, also, um, I'll be featuring some art, that, some demonstrations that I'll be doing uh, throughout Long Island and that would be kind of fun for you guys to get out and watch. But for today, you could sit back and relax and I'm going to show you something fun. All right, so this is a blank piece of paper. It doesn't owe me anything. Everybody's like, what's going on here? Notice there is no drawing. Whoop, whoop, no drawing. That's because this is an impressionistic painting and I kind of go with the flow. Uh, watercolor was my first love. Um, I, my influence is I love, I love flowers. I love uh, Monet. Those are the people that I love. And so this, is going, this blank piece of paper is going to turn into the beginning stages, hello, of this. So this is an impressionistic of flowers. I have a photograph up here that I work from. Here's the source. Does that look like that? No, if you could see in the camera. It doesn't look like that. But it's an impression of it. It's the colors, it's the feelings, and heck, it's spring. And we've been waiting a long time for spring to come, haven't we? Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about my materials in case you are a watercolorist or you'd like to get excited about watercolor. All right, so. In the beginning, maybe you went to school and they said, hey, let's do watercolor finger painting and this is sort of the palette that you kind of got stuck with. And you were like, what's up with this palette? It's all dry inside. Well, guess what? It's okay. You have to reconstitute it with a little bit of water like this. And it's a happy thing. If you have old paints at home, this is a common question people will ask me, and they're all crumbly inside and powdery. Those are kind of going to be for an experimental project because they're going to be kind of grainy. So if it's beautiful like this in one piece, it's fine. Just keep in mind that watercolors are staining. So even though you're thinking water, it's still staining. Okay, so be careful. But these are fun to work with if you have these at home. The other thing people will often ask me is if you have tubes of paint laying around. Okay, if the paints are crumbly inside, you can't use them. But if you can open them up and uh, open them up and reconstitute them, you can use them again. So don't worry. And if you have any old brushes hanging around, if the hairs are coming out, <laughs> if the hairs are coming out, then I would chuck that brush. All right, so that's maybe something you might have uh, hanging around, and I will talk later about maybe things that you could purchase to upgrade what you have now. All right, so what do I have? What did I bring? All right, I have this, my Winsor Newton palette here. Uh, I filled up my own paints inside, and I labeled everything. Uh, I'll go over some colors later as I'm painting along and it just sits like this and it folds. The other thing you do as a watercolorist is you put in a little bit of dabs of color because look how dark this is. Can you really tell what color that is? I can't. So I put a little bit of water here and it shows you a little bit of story of what I've got. That's my palette. Brushes. Well, I'm sort of a flat brush painter. Everybody's got different sizes. You got flat, you got round, you got pointy. This is sort of what I use to create the painting I just showed you. Uh, what else? Just a handy little bucket of water and my spray bottle. Now I wet this paper before you guys showed up, so it's a little damp. And why do I wet the paper? People ask me. Oh, I forgot to mention the paper. The paper is Arches paper. It's a 140 pound cold press. And what does that mean? Does it mean it's freezing? You put it in the freezer? No, it means it is smooth, okay? If you go with a hot press, it is going to be bumpy. So when you go shopping, just remember that. Okay, so it is a smooth watercolor paper and it's very thick. And you can use both sides. It's kind of expensive, so you want to kind of use both sides. All right, so what am I thinking? 
Well, again, there's no sketch here that makes a lot of people kind of nervous. And people ask you, why don't you do that? Well, I don't want to be committed to one shape. I don't want to be committed to any shape. Now, it's going to drip on the floor. Most watercolorists will not do this work on an easel unless they are super crazy like me. But um, it's going to run. And you know what? That's fun. Let's have fun today. All right? So I'm just getting the influence of these colors. Uber delicious. I don't know why I refer everything to food, but I do, because that's what it is. And it's really colorful. And again, it's been a very bleak winter, so what I might do is either start photographing, go to our local nurseries, and walk around and take some great photos, see some flower shows to get influence. So here, this is Quinn Rose that I'm throwing on. And again, there's really no hard edges. See here, the hard edge would be like something like this. So I'm going to hit that with some water or my little trusty special whoop, whoop. spray bottle. Cool beans. All right, so what am I thinking? I'm thinking cool and warm colors. And you're thinking, what is that? All right, and I'm squinting. Why? Because I love Botox, and I want to get lots of wrinkles. No, I'm doing that because I'm looking at the values of what I'm. And you're thinking, no way. Is she going to figure out anything? Next color I'm going to throw in here is some greens. Oh, I've got to throw this a little bit this way, because that's in the background, the greens. And why is that? Because you want to have the value. See in between here and between all of these is greens. I'm going to clean this up. Now, normally in my studio, I would be working flat, and I would have a blow dryer. And I'd be blow drying this dry in between phases. But this is the magic land of live TV, and I need to do it this way. And I don't want to hurt your ears anyway. I don't, don't you just love these colors? It kind of just looks like a tie-dye kind of thing. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, if I must say myself. Are you having a good day? It's sunny. That's, that's a good day, right? Here on Long Island, it's a beautiful sunny day. Okay, so I want to leave the white spaces because this way, well, let's use this. So this would be the first step of my painting. <laughs> Did they know they were going to have this much water on the studio floor? I don't think so. This is a pretty start. So it's really loose, impressionistic. And believe it or not, something like this will turn into flowers. And I'm going to show you how. So again, psh, I would come in here and uh, blow dry this dry. And I would lay it flat, and it would be beautiful. So in the Magic TV, I'm going to show you one that's dry. Put this on the floor. Here's one that's dry. How do I know it's dry, people? Bone dry. It's got to be bone dry for this technique. You can feel it. You can snap it. Any questions, keep them, keep them in mind. That would send it to my website, and I'll answer any questions you have. I'm doing a live demo coming up, I'll tell you, at the Manila Library. Anyway, all right, so here we go. So first of all, you have to decide which way is the paper going to go. This is sort of an abstract painting. So is it this way? Is it this way? Well, again, here's my source. So what way do you think I should put it? Again, there's no sketch on here. So are you crazy, Lisa? Like, what are you going to do here? Well, again, a new squint. And I'm going to feel that there's going to be flowers in this area. When I put my little clip. OK, put my little clip here. A lot of watercolorists will, I know this is you know, looking at me and going, what are you doing? They'll tie this down like it's a wild animal or something. Hello, it's just paper. And why do they do that? Because they don't like this curling. Oh, it doesn't bother me. All right, it's just going to do its own thing. This watercolor paper is 100% cotton, OK? And so it's going to have some breathing in it. So it's fine. All right, and it's very good paper. It's not like the kind you had back in the day in high school, and it would ripple when you put the water on it. This is good paper. See how flat that is? OK, and I'm not going to make it any flatter than that. All right, so now I'm thinking of the flape, the flower shape. All right, remember now here, I'll just give you a little art lesson here. Here's my body. This is the positive shape. And the negative shape is the shape that's around me, right, in between here. So I'm going to paint the shape around the flower. And that's going to give me my impression of flowers. So I'm going to come in here. Now, again, bear with me. I probably should use a smaller brush. Why? So that it doesn't run all over the place like a kukumuku. OK, let's grab a little paper towel here. And I'm going to create the shape around the flower. Let's see. Now, in creating these shapes, I'm, just, I'm not married to the shapes that I see there. I'm kind of just having fun with it. 
And this is the part of the inventing. Notice if, I don't know what the camera can see there, but it's, I just put in some Quin Violet. I'm going to have fun with this. And I put some green in there. And you're like, what is she doing? Maybe this is a leaf coming in here. So this style I learned in Parsons from my favorite watercolor teacher, Barbara Nietzsche's. And uh, I studied with her for two years in Parsons. And then I was invited privately to work with her. And she's very impressionistic. And I've just taken my love of watercolor, of flowers, and other mediums. Um, and used my skills to create this kind of negative painting technique that I love so much. Now watercolor is also very transparent, so it's, look how delicious that is. There's an orange in the background there, and that's popping through. All right, so again, I'm going to use a little bigger shapes because I don't want to run my whole time at doing this. I want to make sure that you can see something on the camera. So I would come in here. Let me make a bigger flower shape so you can see. Bigger flower shape, please. <laughs> so I'm looking at these shapes here in my picture. Hold the phone. I got to get around. I was having too much fun and make sure I bring the color out. Notice the shapes in the background of the flower are all different colors. I'm not going to do one color that's boring. All right, so this is a hard edge. So I'm going to come in here at my brush. And I'm wiping it off into my paper towel because I want it to be not too juicy in the water family. There's one flower. Here's two flowers. I'm going to make this one big so you can see it. I know, it's coming. Um, people ask me, like, how long does it take you to do an average painting? A long time because there's processes in my thoughts that I have to go through. You know, sometimes I'll let the painting rest for a little while and then I'll come back to it and think, what did it need? Um, I don't wait too long. I mean, if I have a painting that I did a year ago or two ago, my whole process has changed since then. All right, so I'm coming around. Uh, let's look at this flower here. So I'm thinking of the shape I'm making and not making. All right, so this is folded in half flower, so I have to bring this here. So remember, I told you it's the negative shape. So this might be the beginning of another flower shape in here. Let me come in here and soften these edges. All I'm doing is taking a very, whoa, you're not going anywhere, buddy. <laughs> Conversation with the paint. That's my life. OK. I could have a conversation with yourself, too. All right, so this is giving a second value in here. Cool beans. That looks good. And now let's put a little, I know you're dying for me to put, I mean, in this middle here, it's, it is um, a brownish color, black color, so I don't want to do that. I want you to be able to see it. And I want to add in some color. So people know that's a flower when I add in the little middle. So I'm going to show you the next step, and then I'm going to show you some other work. So for instance, this would come into this. Come on, guy. Let go. See how it's layered? So then I come in with another. I'll just go here and show you. And then I would just continue with this being another flower. So this is how you do, you create layers and layers of work. Sorry. And I would just come in here and continue on with the journey of where the rest of these flowers are. Kind of cool, right? Yay. All right, so that's a very impressionistic uh, demonstration of how I would create this painting. So here is the two phases here. And uh, step one was the wash. Step two was creating these images. And step three was considering the whole composition. Uh, why does something like this work? Well, because I have big, I have big shapes, small shapes. I have a variety of values inside. Um, I also splash some color in here, kind of a fun thing, like bam, like as I'm cooking. So that's the watercolor family. So for the next couple of minutes, I'd like to show you a little bit of my other art processes, which are kind of fun. All right, let's see what I can show you now. All right, so I still have a love of art and uh, a love of flowers. I mean, that's what you need to find out is what your love is, either a medium or um, a subject. So my subject of flowers is always, always going to be there. Since a little girl, always grabbing everybody's flowers and drawing them. So what I have done is I've worked with oils. 
with, um, to create my images with flowers. So here's an oil painting, if you could go here and see this, come back. This is an oil painting. Uh, I, what I did for this one was I set up a still life in the sunshine. It's, it was a fresh bouquet of flowers and they call that, you know, uh, setting up a still life as opposed to working from a photograph, which I did there. And um, this is done in a nice, gorgeous phthalo blue, and it's great that I hit in some yellows, and it has a lot of texture to it. If you'd like to see this one in person, this one is on display in the front window of Trapani Art and Frame Gallery here in Manhasset. Um, and it's, it's a beauty. Everybody loves it because it's a, a sto showstopper, as they call it, from far away. So it wouldn't be a, what they call a piano piece. When you hang it behind a piano, you have to, you have to um, go in close. This is, you can see far away. It's very, very bright. Uh, the next series that I'm working on, which is kind of exciting, is my New York City series. Let's see, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so this is a lot of fun for me. I'm, I've, I've created quite a few. I have a body of work with this. And um, how did I get started in this? See, it's nice to know the backstory about why artists do work. All right, flower painter, yes, now a new, you know, new York City painter. You know, when people leave New York, they're like, oh, I can't stand the traffic. And, and then the very thing that they miss is the thing that they want to have art of. And they're like, do you, Lisa, have you know, a little bit of this art, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go like, really? So they're missing the traffic, the yellow cha-cha line that you see through Manhattan. So that's what kind of influenced me. So this one's called um, New York City taxi love affair, and that's really what it is. We all have kind of a love-hate relationship. And this is a direct approach of painting, where I took, painted, you know, mixed the colors in my oils, boom, put it on. Now, oils is way different than watercolor. This technique, I did sketch ahead of time, and I did do a value sketch and did a lot more, you know, photographing and figuring out. So the whole system is a little different, but it is sort of in a negative painting fashion. But anyway, I think it, it reads really well, and I absolutely love doing that. The next style of painting that I work in is this one, which is portrait painting. This is what they call a soul portrait. Clients commission me to do a portrait of themselves in a spiritual format. And this is what I have for this young lady. This is Valerie's work. She was gracious enough to let me put it on the air. And I call this one a mixed media painting. Why is this mixed media? Because it has, for me, my definition is it has more than one medium added into it. So in this one, you have, um, the sand from Sedona, which is very cool in here. Uh, we have a gold leaf in here. We have crystals, feathers, and even pearls. And the really cool thing is I created this with water from the glacier mountains of Iceland. My daughter had went there, and that was a request that I had made. So that's what's really cool, and it's sort of like a high-energy painting, and it keeps the authenticity to the person. Again, if you want to view more work, you can see that on my website. LisaFazioArtist.com. Okay, so that's the mixed media. So let's get excited about something that you can do. All righty, so what can you do? Well, one of the things you could do ooh, is pick up a book. You know, there's all great books in the library, it's wonderful. All right, and this is just a sketchbook, and here it talks about, um, and again, it could be sketching with what? Pencils, pens, whatever you're interested in, and adding a little bit of watercolor, and there's plenty of different artists will, that will share your process. Um, I have different books for different things, like drawing people, animals, um, uh, flowers and such, and I'm going to share some of those with you. How am I doing with time? 18. Okay. Okay, so these are my sketchbooks. All right, let's talk about sketchbooks. All right. I, I, people stop me all the time and they ask me questions. I just was dropping my cat off at the vet yesterday and a woman said, wait, I have art in my car, I have to show you. And she shows it to me and says, scribble stuff. And she goes, does it have any merit? Hello, if, do you like it? Did you have fun? Did it bring you joy? Did you stop for a minute and relax? Did you, were you doing wash at the same time? No, you were having fun. Can't we just have fun? All right, so this is, you know, when you get a sketchbook, find something, go to our local art stores and find something. There's sketchbooks everywhere, or journals as they call them. Um, find something that appeals to you. Now these are binded sketchbooks. Some people like the ones that are spiral because this way if uh, you're showing it off to anybody, you can um, toss out the page that didn't come out that good. Hello, people, you can collage over that. Don't get all crazy on that, all right? It's fine. I've been sketching a long time. I don't even have probably my original sketchbooks, but these are the ones that I use. It doesn't mean that they're professional. It means that it's what I like. The other thing is what helps me pick a sketchbook is the weight. If I'm gonna put this in my backpack and I'm gonna travel, I take my little Weight Watcher scale and I weigh it. So I wanna make sure it's not too heavy. I'm traveling, I don't wanna have something heavy. All right, so these are the ones that I selected. 
So what are these of? All right, so I do everyday living, this is daily, and then this is Alaska and Italy. So I'm gonna give you a little insight. So for every day, what are you sketching? Well, my family goes a little nervous when they're around me because I'm gonna sketch them when they're sleeping. But hello, I'm an artist, I'm entitled to do that, and I'll put something on you. Don't get crazy on me. First thing, when you get these books, please put your name on it, put your phone number. Here I have my information. You, even though you think, ah, it's just a sketchbook, you'll be very heartbroken if you, if you lose it, trust me. And I'm like running around like Kukumuku. All right, so these are just black and white sketches. And like, for instance, this is Central Park. All right, you can see that. How long did this take me? It took me 45 minutes. My family becomes very impatient. Let's go. We want to walk around. So maybe I might do a light sketch while I'm there. And then when I'm back on the train, I might do it in ink or work off my photographs. But nevertheless, I want to have the feeling. Uh, what I tell some of my students is you can write underneath. Here I wrote the date, what the weather, whatever it is that was inspiring me for the day. Okay? So again, these are, these are line sketches. So what did I use? Okay, you can use, well, this is a professional rapidograph. So this has like ink in it. And you fill it up, it has a cartridge. They have lots of cartridge pens that you can use. Again, have fun with it, experiment, get your coupons, it's a good thing. An inexpensive way of these pens, it's just your Uniball gel pen, okay? You know, one time I went away on vacation, all my pens ran out of ink, I had to ask the waitress to give me her pen. All right, so hello, be creative, all right? You don't have to, why do I pick these two pens? Because they're waterproof and I can do watercolor over them. How do you know if they're waterproof, Lisa? Hello, just put it down on a piece of paper. Well, they get their tongue on there and just see if it water moves it. Hello, it's waterproof, okay? I mean, if you want to ask the person, is it archival and all that stuff, hello, knock yourself out. All right, so here's the watercolor. So a little bit of ink, Clark Gardens. Let's see what I can show you that's kind of fun. Uh, oh, I have, these, I have them tabbed. So like, also the very cool thing about mine, you can always still tell the time of the season. Okay, the season, right? 10 minutes, is that what you're telling me, right? So here's ink, watercolor. Here's some poppies, very bright and colorful. The other thing about this book I like is that it has a little pocket in the back so you can put in some photographs if you don't have enough around you, you're stuck in traffic or such. Okay, here's Alaska. Again, here's my name in the front. I put myself because I'm traveling. So here's glaciers. And then I make these small little boxes because when you're traveling, you can't always get a big old sketch in. But if I have time to get a big old sketch in, I will do it. These are really pretty, right? And that's kind of like a time log. These take me hours, people, all right? I might come back after a vacation and put in some more work. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of ink. I'm also an illustrator, so uh, I tried to do that. And again, pretty. I also, it acts as a log. In the back, I write down w what I did each day and where I was. You think I'm gonna remember this stuff? Hello, no. So that's what I do. And then quickly, the last, the other thing too that a lot of people forget to do, how about take a picture of yourself drawing on location? This is, um, this is Italy on top of some rooftop. My family's sleeping. And I'm drawing on the rooftop, one of my favorite things. You know, did some calligraphy. Again, same idea. Um, and don't get crazy about if you make mistakes, you can come home and put some white out in it and stuff. There's lots of things. Isn't that pretty? That's the rooftop. And again, I put those deeps in. All right, so that's how you can get excited about you know, doing your own process. Um, what other things can I show you? So I just want to talk to you about shows that you can see. So I'm going to be at the Mineola Memorial Library. So the watercolors, these will be on display. I'm also doing a live demonstration there. What other way is there to demonstrate? Uh, that will be May 28, 23rd, and that will be, what did they give me? 6.30. So come on down, you can see me in person. And the Trapani Art uh, Gallery has that piece on display. You can see that. Or visit my website, lisafazioartist.com. And uh, scoot me an email. I'd love to hear what you're talking about, you know, what, what's going on. Uh, what other things can I tell you? That's about it. I'm going to say people ask me, you know, how long have you been painting? How do you get started? Well, I sort of paint a lot in my head at the same time. And my favorite quote from Van Gogh is, I dream... I dream my painting and then I paint my dream. And that's sort of what I do today. So thank you so much for asking me in. I appreciate it and have a great day and keep painting and drawing. You can do it. Thanks. Thank you so much. Anything else? Any questions? You want to be an artist today? Come on. I, I Come on, get artist. your brush, girl. Come on. She gave <laughs> me the brush, y'all. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> I'm about to paint walls. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things you said, I'm going to keep the brush, but that's okay. I'm going to use this. Uh, is that um, one of the things you do is you have a conversation with the paint.
Mm -hmm. What kind of conversations are you having? Well, a fun, a fun, like, does it, uh, like, for the one I was starting, was mm -hmm. like, I want to have cool and warm colors. I want to have big and small shapes. Okay. Um, I don't want to create another blank. Okay. You know what I mean? So when I do the floral painting, they're never all going to look the same. Okay. Why would I do that? Any of these paintings, they're mm -hmm. never going to look the same. And I'm, 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 it's a funny story. When I was a little girl, I took a class at Pratt, okay. and they gave everybody the same materials, right? right? So they're coming around, and they're seeing, oh, what did you do, Johnny? What did you do? This one, and then they come to me, and I did the most original design and the girl next to me changed it at the last minute. I was like, oh, you're kidding. I had the most original idea ever uh -huh. and she changed it. So that's my thing. I look around. I don't want to be like anybody else. Right. I want to make it the most original. So that's what I've got here. I hope so. Okay. And one of the things you said um, that resonated with me was that when you paint and you're starting out, you need to find what your love is, right? Love, yes. I, I love food. I love heels. But <laughs> I don't know if I get, I mean, I could paint that. But how do you know when it's right? Okay, that's a good question. Um, Val, you're a little younger than me, but back in the day, when you had the phone attached to the wall, uh -huh. okay, you were talking to this person, or you're in it, like for me, it's a history uh -huh. class, and you're in a class and you're like, I'm so bored. You're yeah. doodling. Hello, that's a form of art. You're uh -huh. doodling. If you're gardening, uh, someone said, oh, I'm, I can't paint. I said, but you garden, you sew. Those are other forms that you did your makeup. Those okay. are all forms of being art. Everything you see in this room, was drawn first. Okay. Think about it. The desk to the easels to the mm. curtains all had to be drawn first, con you know, conceptualized in your right. brain and then put on paper or what have you. So, so the person who sat on the phone and mm -hmm. sat there and did the doodling, that was the beginning of the creative process. You can get, you can just get a book and start. The other thing too, that's a great idea, mm -hmm. is you can create um, doodles from other people's doodles just okay. to get you started. Like you know, when you pick your makeup out, and you say, I like that girl's makeup. Yes. I'm going to try it. That's the creative process. You're starting. Okay. People don't realize how creative they are, yeah. even like picking your clothes out is creative. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's seriously, between the textures and the patterns, that's yeah. a form of art. Because people will say, well, I don't know what to start. And I'll go, a lot of it has to do with what you wear. Like, if you tend to wear a certain color and you realize in your environment, those are colors that you love, that bring you joy. So you can paint them. I mean, hello, if I paint a lot of yellow, I don't know if I'm going to wear yellow, but, <laughs> you know, you want yellow or warmth in your life. So mm -hmm. everything has a vibration of, of energy, each color. So for me, in my studio, I painted every color I could think of on each color wall. And all my friends are like, wait, you have to have white walls. Who's, show me, first of all, rule book. Eh, throw that out. Yeah. Why do I need to have white walls in a studio? Mm -hmm. I have every color you can think of okay. because I want to feel like I'm in the tropics because we live in New York and mm -hmm. it's cold and dreary and gray. Here I am watching TV shows about grass and do, doing lawn care in the middle of the winter because I love grass. Right. And I said, you know what? I'm going to paint that. Boom. Put that color in. Okay. And you're painting. I'm looking at your books. I'm, I'm amazed by how gorgeous your work is. So I have a question. It's, it's more particularly for you. Um, when you are drawing, right, and you're, you mentioned Central Park, and you're like, your family wants to move around a lot, and you want to draw, do you find that as an artist that sometimes physically being there to capture all the moments is much better than actually working from a picture or from memory? That is such a, you, did you do art before? That is like a key <laughs> debate between artists, like, is your real artist if you work off of a photograph mm -hmm. versus working from life, and you have all this debate? Well. You know, the sun is setting, and I'm going to sit and paint, and it's cold, and I really have to eat something, and I'm going to take a photograph and bring, bring it back to me mm -hmm. in the studio. So I will paint a little bit on location, and then I'll bring it back. I mean, it depends on all the elements, because you have the sun coming on your easel. You have uh, sh shadows and such. You don't even, you know, even watercolor outside, that whole technique I showed you today would be dry in a second, especially today. It's super windy. Mm. So there's a whole element th that's involved. So I think it's a nice to have a little bit of a balance. I don't think there's one one true way to do it. Um, there's some artists that never leave their studio and they mm -hmm. create the most beautiful work. So how are you going to tell them that's wrong? Very so true. it can be a little bit of both, I think. And for me, I find inspiration all around. And uh, yes, my family can you know, become like impatient. I'm painting and drawing as such. But then it's even interesting. I'll tell you a funny story. Please. In this. I'm going to, uh, let's say I went to uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn uh, Gardens, the Botanical Garden, yes. my favorite place, because right about now, the end of April mm -hmm. is the most beautiful time it to go. Gorgeous. I go every year and they have gorgeous tulips, awesome. Mm -hmm. so I'll sit there in the easel, right? So I'm sitting there painting, la la, minding my business, and a lot of people are visiting, okay? So right. they don't speak English, and they're just coming behind me, and they're like tapping me on the shoulder, and they're like, they want to take a photo. So I'm right. like, okay, take a photo. All right, take a photo of me, hi. And then the guy goes, no, 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 get up. So I was like, get up. So I get up, and I'm like, what's he going to do? No, he wants to sit in the chair and ah. make it like he <laughs> painted it. I was like, what? What are we 
you doing here? And then you have people, then I ask somebody, could you take a picture of me like painting? And then you have the kid in the background doing the, whoop, uh -huh. the photo bomb. I mean, so when you're an artist, people just are friendly. They think that right. you're your best friend. I've had people, you know, give you my opinion. I Did I ask you your opinion? Uh -huh. And then I, so a lot of times when I'm painting, I will pick an off day, not a Saturday or a Sunday. Okay. Especially like a, a holiday in Central Park is crazy because I'm asking, I'm, I'm answering more questions than I am painting. Uh -huh. But it's a lot of fun and I'll just either start a little sketch because it's hard to always gauge the day like if it's going to be nice or not nice I just say you know what I'm going to paint today I'm going to draw today I'm just going to get a little bit of creativity in my life and that's all anybody has to do every day a little creativity and there's a tip for everyone if you're starting out to paint um, you can uh, pretty much find a time where you can do it in private Right. Yep, absolutely. Just, okay. get, just get that pen out, guys, and All pencil, right. whatever it is. Well, thank you so much thank for being you here. Thank you for asking me. I loved it. Oh, I had a good time having you. I had a good time watching, and I can't wait to take some of these paintings with me. Uh, <laughs> please tell us one more time your website. Okay, it's lisafazioartist.com, and I will be at the Mineo Library. All my work's on display for the whole month of May, so please come out and see it. You heard her. Come out and see her. Guys, we have a really great treat for you. We have um, the Lifeline documentary, which is about the late Norman Hall, our mm. um, director and, uh, and the founder of the PATV Playwrights Project. It's a real treat. It um, chronicles the behind the scenes of, of our play, I Can See You. So take a look. Cool.